Tonight, rescues and evacuations in the heartland. Parts of Nebraska seeing the worst flooding in decades. There goes the Mormon Canal Bridge right there. It just washed out. Bridges collapsing, levees breaching, all triggered by rapid snowmelt and heavy rain while the ground is frozen or saturated. It really is very dangerous. It's moving fast. It's cold water. You do not want to get caught in it. This Black Hawk helicopter is dropping one and a half ton sandbags to protect the city of Lincoln's Wells. Northwest of Omaha, the National Guard rescuing four people from this home surrounded by water Friday. While in Waterloo, the Elkhorn River topping 24 feet, breaking the record by more than five feet. The water claiming at least one life. Two other people are missing in the state. Dangerous flooding extending all the way to Wisconsin. Northeast of Madison, first responders going door to door this week. It's unbelievable. I just never expected it to be this bad. Flooding so bad that in the small town of Columbus, more than 40 people had to be rescued. The fast moving floodwaters washed out several towns in eastern Nebraska and Iowa. Every levee south of Council Bluffs to the Missouri border has been breached. We got a lot of d difficult decisions ahead. It's devastating. It is devastating. Oh, Merlin Bemis had to be plucked out of the cold flood waters, which filled his Omaha cabin. I was scared. I was petrified. You know, I didn't know what was how fast it was coming up. Emergency evacuations are in place after several levee failures along the Missouri River. It's expected to crest Sunday at more than 40 feet south of Omaha. That would mark 15 feet over flood stage. First responders rescued people off the roof of pickup trucks all weekend. At least two people have died. In Columbus, Nebraska, 50-year-old James Wilkie was swept away as he tried to help someone stranded when a bridge collapsed. His body was recovered hours later near his farm. Well, maybe she went up that way. I don't think so. I don't know. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Guys, this is the town of Fremont. Um, about an hour away from my hometown. Obviously, this is not a good situation to be in. Um, down there, you've got a car pretty much completely submerged in water, so that's probably six foot of water down there. These guys, just walking through, they're trying to get to somebody they know down that way. But it's just a lot of stuff get got damaged out here. I mean this is the whole town of Fremont. The whole town is underwater. I don't know if you guys can hear that in the background with some of those uh it sounds like drag cars, but those are airboats. You got a bunch of guys that are from the airboat community on the rivers. You can hear that. Those are guys running airboats to go try to get people out of their houses and just get them on higher ground. There's been crews just running non-stop since this happened and the water's only coming higher. They still, still expect the water to be coming higher for uh, another two or three days. So. It's not going to get any better from here on out and these guys are going to need a lot of help out here um, you know obviously physical help with cleanup but as well as financial and that's just what I'm trying to do is just help financially for these people in this community like small town Nebraska I mean they need as much help as they can get when stuff like this happens so um, like I say these are a lot of the river bottoms and the small towns that I go through when I go bow hunting out here and to see this stuff happening to them really sucks. So, I don't know, hopefully, you know, with what little platform I do have, um, I know the Whitetail Fit family's strong, and hopefully, uh, hopefully we can raise some money for these people out here. So, like I say, guys, I've got a, a GoFundMe account put together that's gonna go directly to helping these people out. You hear those airboats in the background, but, go directly to helping these people out in these small towns in Nebraska. Um, just get them food and water. There's been 15 plus shelters set up. 
um, on this side of the state. And uh, like I say, these airboats are just running 24 seven, trying to get people out of their houses, um, get them to higher ground, get them dry. And uh, what I'm trying to help with, with doing all of this is just um, getting some clothes on their back and uh, getting them some food, getting them some water and just helping out with a place to stay, I guess. I feel pretty helpless in a situation like this, but yeah. Yeah, like no control. I mean, you can't, you're stuck. I mean, you don't dare get in it. You could tell, it, I mean, you could, it sounded like just a rushing, uh, I mean, even inside my apartment here, I could just hear the water rushing. This is a very challenging time for farmers and ranchers across the state. We have uh, snow, heavy snows in parts of the state with a lot of wind, and so as particularly affected cow-calf uh, producers and, well, really any livestock that's outdoors. on a, an area called a 100-year floodplain. You don't expect to see a lot of water like that. For Doreen Yankovich, the recent floodings have hit close to home, her brother's home to be exact. He's lived near 226th and Q Street for about 15 years and evacuated Friday night. That's a hard thing because it came in a little bit faster than they were uh, expecting. In situations like that, you try to grab the essential things and that included little chickens and uh, pictures and things like that. But some essentials were left behind. Right now the horses were just too big to get out and so they're on high ground as far as they can find. I was blown away. Uh, the utter devastation. The power of nature is incredible. I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction. Here with your feeder flash for Friday, March the 15th, where there's cattle catastrophe in Nebraska. Not a little one. Major, major league cattle catastrophe, but the weather this week, middle part of the week, has just been unbelievable and probably harder on our type of people, cattle producers, agriculture guys, than anybody. But uh, we talked about the winds on Wednesday they had in the Southern Plains and Texas Panhandle and all around, blowing over a lot of trucks, uh, destroying a lot of outbuildings, things like that. Uh, but the worst I saw was in Logan, New Mexico, Eastern New Mexico. Uh, they had, uh, if you come out of Logan there, you know that there's a big kind of a canyon trench there that uh, leads into Ute Lake and uh, really deep, but you come across there and there's a real tall railroad bridge across there and uh, it actually blew the train off the bridge. 
And that takes a lot of wind, people, and it was not a tornado, just straight line winds, gusts up to nearly 80 miles an hour. But uh, luckily the engines had gone across already, and uh, when that wind got up under there from, from below, through that deep trench, and, and really some winds whipping through there, but blew this big train uh, off of the bridge and there's a long fall down there and probably some uh, pretty valuable things that were in tow there but uh, just unbelievable but on Thursday if it wasn't bad enough we've had the worst winter in recent memory and then through this bomb cyclone had a horrible blizzard that come through on Wednesday terrible uh, you know 50 60 70 mile an hour winds along with a lot of snow but then the flooding, the rains and the floods that come through on Thursday and it's just uh, about as much as any person can be asked to, uh, to withstand. Uh, I know we're told that you know, we're not asked to endure more than we can stand, but it's getting to that point, people. And I uh, talked to a lot of producers up there uh, with just unbelievable stories of uh, dams breaking loose, floods coming through, the death loss. It's hard to estimate how many newborn calves have been lost this winter, but uh, nearly all of them have been lost in the last day or two uh, through central Nebraska especially. But floodwaters coming through. Look at these floodwaters here in Columbus, Nebraska. It's, it's terrible. You know, it's bad enough when cattle are cold as long as you can keep them fed, but when they're wet and cold and you can't get them to feed them or you don't have a way to get them fed, uh, then then it's bad and, and I talked to some guys that said cattle were, were old cows or, or don't have to be old just their, their mother cows were literally dying standing up in the flood waters uh, in the in the mud they get down they can't get back up uh, the, the baby calves uh, don't even have a chance uh, it, it's terrible and uh, it's at the point now where you don't even know what you can do for them or, or when it's going to get any better I really just ask all of you, uh, you know, pause now or when you get done listening to this, just drop your head and say a prayer for them. That we're at that point, you can't really do anything else for them. Is just say a prayer for these people to get through it, to get through it mentally, physically, emotionally, financially. Uh, whether they can withstand this or not, it's hard to say, but it, this is the worst deal we've seen. Uh, that I ever remember and uh, you can't downplay it and, and I can't intensify it enough how bad it is. So here is the aerial uh, from Google Earth to give you an idea of what it looks like and we're going to go down into North Bend. Obviously uh, I couldn't get into North Bend. A lot of you locals could probably understand why. I had to go over on this county road and uh, take off from this location head south like so this the cursor is roughly the path I took with the drone um, and I want you to keep in mind there's an antenna tower right about here that's a nice point of reference on the north side of town and the water tower is over there so this is the initial takeoff point right off the county road that was next to the roadblock if you see any water in this shot it is water that is not supposed to be here uh, this is all the flooding on the north side of town. The river is actually on the south side of town. And that's the town, North Bend, that's coming into view now. Uh, and the river's on the other side of that. Uh, this is the school on the northeast part of town. I want you to get a point of reference with that, uh, which is right over here, so to speak. That's where the drone is, the next shot's coming from. And we'll pan from the, that's looking off towards Fremont. There you can see that little band of water is Platte River. And now we're panning to look south and eventually we'll be looking west. And there's the water tower on the west side of town. Again, this is the kind of the same angle, but with the uh, camera zoomed in a little bit so you can get a closer look at some of these homes. Uh, all these streets are flooded and uh, highway 30 is kind of at the top there that white silo is right at the junction of 79 and 30 so 30 is kind of running right through there and 30 has been closed for uh, several days 
I know some people have been trying to bounce around the country roads to get between North Bend and Fremont, and it's been mixed luck. The next shot is me going further south. 79 is right below me there. Um, and I'm going to switch over to Google Earth again and show you sort of the path that I wanted to take. Um, the thing about drones is everyone thinks they have a drone with a 400-foot ceiling, so the best shot comes at 400 feet, and that's not necessarily so. Uh, I wanted to get the drone down low into an area we can't access, but how low you can go is limited when the transmission signal is getting interrupted by a lot of uh, trees or hills that have kind of blocked your signal. So this is as low as I can go without losing signal. I'm going south on 79. You can kind of look at those businesses that are located on that highway. Uh, at this point, I've turned around and now I'm going east on, I believe it was 8th Street, uh, based on the church that I went by. Then I flew south while looking west, and then I was westbound on Highway 30 to go by the Dollar General and Casey's. That looks like it's a Great Plains uh, communications building. Uh, and then I'm turning east to head down, I, like I said, I think it's 8th Street. And you can get a sense of the amount of water that's in this town. Uh, a lot of these folks were evacuated um, to Snyder. Uh, I think North Bend's a population of about 1,200. Snyder's a population of 300. So some have been staged at the auditorium or the fireman's ball uh, ballroom. And not. I don't think it's everyone is in those buildings. I know there's... A lot of family and friends that have been taken, um, some evacuees in other neighboring towns. But you got to understand in rural Nebraska, uh, these towns can be anywhere from like five miles apart to, you know, 15 or 20 miles apart. And then bridges are closed or highways are washed over. So you have to go even further to get around to where you got to go. So, you know, 20 minute commutes can easily turn into hours depending on where you need to go if you have to get there. And even if you're, you think you have to get there, you have to keep in mind that you don't want to put yourself at risk and have the um, someone trying to find you to rescue you. All right, so now I'm flying sideways. I'm going south, but I'm looking west. And so this is, as I'm flying, I'm actually getting closer to the river. I never flew to the river. Um, I didn't want to push the range of the drone that much. And we can, we can all surmise what the river looks like. We've seen the photos on Facebook. It is not looking good. And there's various jams that break. So like the water will recede and then someone will, on Facebook said though, there's an ice jam that just broke. And now there's going to be another surge of water. So the water it'll go down and then all of a sudden you think it's coming back up. So uh, I would like to think we're on the tail end of things, but I, I, our journey is still a long ways to go.